Lights, camera. Bruce, right. All right, so what do we got? Well, we're back to singers again. Oh, we are? Yes, we are. And uh, this, this is going to be a good one. We're going to go with the great David Coverdale of Whitesnake. Oh. Uh, here I go again. Versus <laughs> the one and only Mr. Paul Stanley. Oh! We have more the uh, reflectors on his guitar strap <laughs> for the Asylum Tour. Right. One point Stanley. <laughs> we'll start with Figaro. Technical. We're talking singing now, not guitar. Technical. Yeah. Technical singer. Uh, Coverdale and Paul Stanley. Wow. Well, you know, Paul Stanley does his little warm-ups. <laughs> I was in the bathroom. I was. Um, if we were talking about who is technically more of an ass, Paul Stanley would win. <laughs> since we're talking about vocals, David Coverdale. <laughs> technically more what of an ass? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the clammiest? The clammiest. This is the clammiest. Uh, <laughs> Best watch, yeah, watch another YouTube clip if you want to know what that inside joke means. Yeah. Uh, technical. Well, I think technically speaking, I've seen I have seen uh, Paul Stanley do a fantastic version of Phantom of the Opera at the Pantages Theater in Toronto. The guy was terrific, and I'm going with Paul Stanley for technical. All right, Paul. He's trying, to, he's trying to fix this whole contest. No. Just because Paul Stanley and Michael Bolton are friends, they both are going to win. <laughs> ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Feel. Feel. I feel like Paul Stanley's an ass. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce, no, Coverdale, you got an Um, Coverdale's got some good stuff. Uh, but... Some Coverdale page going? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Paul Stanley because... <laughs> Right, for, 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 first of all, first of all, when, when you got a guy who just warms up in the studio and, and you come out with the beginning of Heaven's on Fire, <laughs> you throw that into the guy at any given moment can sing a sentence to an audience. <laughs> like when he told everybody to drive home safe. Richard, from, though. <laughs> for the, you know, and, and Paul, Paul's pu public message was, you better get a designated driver! I mean, that's just, no, no, that's outstanding. I mean, that's outstanding. Play. That's just feel on the spot. Right, right. I can designate a driver. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, writer. Who's a better writer, Figaro? Who's a better writer? Yeah. Mm. Boy, that, that's pretty good. I mean, I, I love the White Snake songs. Kiss has a bunch of good songs. And I think both of those guys have a big hand in the writing. Boy, you know, I think about how many songs from each band that I like and stuff, and uh, I think I was probably more into the White Snake songs. Really? And as far as vocal parts go and stuff, I really dug the uh, the Coverdale stuff probably more than the Kiss stuff. So I'm gonna go to Coverdale. All right, a real again for Fig. Well, the best White Snake album ever was called White Snake. <laughs> And John Sykes, the guitar player, wrote everything on that album. Really? Paul Stanley has <coughs> uh, numerous hits all over the radio. Paul Stanley, hands down, writer. All right, hands down. Some good points. Some good points. Valid. Who is the best overall, Figaro? Overall, jeez. Anybody that can sing to me that I should get a designated driver should win this. Paul Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, overall singer, uh, the man can sing sentences, sing Kiss songs, or he can sing. Actually, I've seen him do uh, the Beatles. Really? And that oh, yeah. special member, Gene. If, if you break my heart, I go. <laughs> but I'll be okay. But uh, and uh, and also you got to throw in Fan of the Opera, uh, Paul Stan. Fan of Who would you rather have in your band, Fix? Well, they'd probably laugh me off the stage if I had a singer that looked like a little old lady, so I guess I'll take Paul Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a couple more years. Yeah, Paul at 50-something uh, still looks good. Still sounds amazing. I think Coverdale these days uh, sounds okay, but he's starting to lose the, the Zeppelin screech. Right. So, uh, got to go with Paul again. All right. 
All right, that, that'll wrap this episode up. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. I, wait. I would like to point this out. Okay, go ahead. Because for those of you who care out there, this is very important. Uh, I care. I, I, in Gene Simmons' book, he did say before, I thought this was rather interesting because they've been partners for a long time. Right. Not sexual. Uh, in a band. And uh, they both have a love for cake. However, <laughs> Gene, I found this interesting, said that if you walked backstage and let's say there was a cake there, but you didn't know, you didn't know if Gene or Paul was back there, you could tell by the cake. Because if the frosting was ripped off the top, that meant Paul was back there, but if the cake was gone, that meant Gene was back there. Because Paul's all about the frosting. He just likes the frosting, huh? Yep. Isn't that Very something? interesting. You heard it here first, Isn't folks. that something? Just wanted you to know. What do you think about that? I like chocolate cake.